Hello, and welcome to On Subrogation. In this video, we're going to discuss the Common Fund Doctrine and how it may affect your med pay and PIP subrogation claims. I'm Jason Sullivan of Rathbone Group, and On Subrogation is the video series that focuses on the subrogation issues that are important to you. In this case, the Common Fund Doctrine is the doctrine that, if a party pursues a claim or litigates a case and creates a fund of money in which other people may have a claim, those other parties are required to share in the pro rata costs and expenses of that claim. In the class action lawsuit case, one single party may bring a claim and an award is entered for millions of dollars. All of those parties that have a stake in that class action have to share in the pro rata costs and expenses. After those are paid, then everybody gets their $2.75. In the segregation claim cases, they usually arise frequently in the med pay and PIP scenario. Your insured will have a personal injury case. They'll pursue the claim either through litigation or through pre-suit negotiations. At the end, they will settle the claim in which they have a fund of money and they have to pay all the lien holders. That's the creation of the fund and the lien holder, the subrogated insurance carrier, is the one that has a claim to those funds. In states where the common fund has been adopted, that insurance carrier then has to take their pro rata share of those costs and expenses and reduce their claim, thereby taking less than the full amount of their claim. Not all states have adopted the common fund doctrine. Some have done so through case law, others have statutes that specifically require a subrogated carrier to reduce their claim. So if you have a claim that you need to reduce based on the common fund doctrine, always look first. Does that state adopt it and have they done it in case law, which usually is a little bit more ambiguous and sets forth the framework that the doctrine applies, but doesn't necessarily give you the formula. In states that have adopted with a statute, there's frequently a formula that's applied, percentages that are required or not required, and then you can work off of that and it's fairly formulaic. If you are faced with a common fund defense, Again, it's usually not a claim that there is no subrogation right. It's simply a matter that the subrogated carrier is required to reduce by the amount of their pro rata share in their costs and expenses. So what you want to look for first is, is a common fund even created? Did your insured or someone pursue a claim in which now there's a fund of money which needs to be used to distribute to all those parties who have a claim? The second is, a lot of states will allow an insurer to override the common fund doctrine through active participation. Active participation can mean different things. If you pursue your claim through intercompany arbitration, arguably that's active participation. The member may create a fund, but you actively participated in pursuing your own claim. That active participation can also exist if you intervene into a lawsuit or pursue through your own litigation. Again, the insurers taking on the job of pursuing the claim and arguably the cost of pursuing their own claim. And so it wouldn't be fair for them to have to share in the cost of somebody else who's pursuing their own recovery. Another thing to look for is, is the math done correctly? Are the figures calculated right under the statute or case law or however it is in that state? If you take a case where you're an insurance carrier, you have a $5,000 med pay exposure. Your insured is unfortunately in a very tragic accident. There's extreme medical bills and treatment that's required from the outset. Your $5,000 policy might pay for the emergency room treatment and not even all of that. If your insured goes on to have many more treatments, possibly surgery, other things like that, those expenses that they may incur in pursuing their claim in litigation, such as a surgeon's expert testimony, those expenses don't really relate to your immediate med pay claim that was paid for emergency room bills. Arguably, it wouldn't be fair for the insurer to have to share in those costs that weren't necessary to proceed with their claim. If you take another example where an accident reconstructionist is necessary, that liability determination is the first obstacle. And whether the insured pursued the claim or the insurer, somebody is going to have to prove liability exists. And so arguably in that case, an accident reconstructionist expense is more likely to be something that an insurer would need to, to share in. Frequently, there's no defense to the common fund doctrine. As I mentioned, a lot of states have statutes that set this forth. They set forth the percentages that must be reduced. And you simply have to look at the dollar figures involved what were the total attorney fees, what was the attorney fee percentage, what were the costs incurred, you plug in the numbers and then you have the amount that you're required to reduce. 
I'm Jason Sullivan for On Subrogation. If you are interested in more videos, we have a general med pay PIP video, as well as the Made Whole Doctrine, which is related to this. Please click on the link below to subscribe. And for On Subrogation, that's the long and short of it.